The great feasts of the Christian as well as of the Jewish liturgy tend to be celebrated over an eight-day period. Today marks the octave or eighth day of Christmas. While continuing to celebrate that feast, today's liturgy focuses on Mary, the mother of Jesus. The more believers deepen their understanding of the mystery of the person of Jesus, the more they came to admire and to be in awe of the woman who not only bore him in her womb, but who by her faith first conceived him in her heart. Today's Gospel repeats that of the second Mass of Christmas. In rereading the passage in today's liturgy, we can't help but be drawn to the line affirming that Mary treasured all the things that were said and pondered them in her heart. Luke repeats the same phrase at the end of his description of the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. Luke's infancy narrative, his account of the conception, birth, and early childhood of Jesus has been the principal source for Christian reflection on and devotion to Mary. The story of the Annunciation emphasizes her faith and openness to God, as well as her ready obedience to his will. Her acceptance of God's invitation to be the mother of the Messiah begins the climactic chapter in the story of God's revealing, saving activity on our behalf. Although the chapter focuses on the public life and ministry and above all on the death and resurrection of Jesus, she is there at its beginning and end as the first recipient of and ideal collaborator with his saving act. Like her, we are called to be open in faith and trust to God's gifts and to allow those gifts to bear fruit in our lives. The description in today's reading of Mary pondering in her heart the events surrounding the birth of Jesus reminds us of the importance to Christian life of prayer and reflection. It is one thing to be touched by the joy and peace, the beauty and spiritual uplift of the Christmas story. It is quite another to be able to keep its great lessons and gifts alive in our hearts in the midst of our everyday lives. Here, meditation and prayer can come to our help by creating a space within us, a spiritual space in which the mystery of God's love can reverberate and gradually permeate our being. Through meditation, our imagination and memory become filled with thoughts and images that counteract the all too negative and distracting ones that threaten so often to overwhelm us. In this area, Mary is a model and a companion someone whose example we can follow and whose help we can seek. January the 1st is not only the octave of Christmas, it's also the first day of a new year, a day on which we traditionally extend our best wishes to one another. As we do so this year, we can't help but be conscious of the state of our world, a world marked in far too many places by war, violence, and terror, a world in which large numbers of people continue to suffer from hunger and disease. Over the last several months, a series of dramatic revelations and events have brought home to us how vulnerable the world's financial system has become and how broad and deep the current economic downturn is and will be. Although part of this is due to the so-called business cycle, much of it is the result of activity that has been driven by greed and irresponsibility. People in positions of authority and power have in many cases failed to recognize and react to financial practices and conditions that have led to the current crisis. In some cases, we are confronted with deliberate and crass fraud. 
in formulating our wishes for the coming year. We can only hope that leaders in all areas of life will be chastened by what has taken place and embrace the steps necessary to renew the financial and business systems and to do it in ways that will not unduly burden generations to come. We all need to examine and to some degree change our own attitudes and practices. We have to learn to live within our means, as positive in so many ways as the benefits of our consumer culture are. Human well-being and happiness do not consist in an ever greater consumption of goods and services. We need to remember this and to rethink our priorities. What does it profit a person, Jesus once asked, to gain the whole world, to gain fame and power, pleasure and prestige, and to lose one's soul, to miss the point of being alive at all? Today's first reading contains one of the best known and most eloquent of biblical blessings. It wonderfully expresses my hopes and prayers for you and for all of us in the coming year. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face shine on us. May he give us peace. To mark the feast, let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that our sharing in this Eucharist will deepen our understanding and appreciation of Mary's role in the story of our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice throughout the world and especially in the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. For government and business leaders, that they will make wise decisions as they seek economic renewal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the working poor and for the unemployed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our deceased relatives and friends and for all those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless us, God, forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. 